Welcome to Learning at Home with Mrs. V. So we've just started talking about decimals and we've talked about decimals being part of a whole, okay? What else do we know that is part of a whole? Hmm, I know, fractions. And you've talked heavily about fractions in third and fourth grade and you probably talked a little bit about decimals last year and you probably related those to fractions and we're gonna be doing that too. So um, I want you to, we're gonna review back to the things that we've already gone over so that we can move forward to a new activity. So one thing we've talked about, we've talked about relating decimals to money. So when you go into um, a clothing store and you're looking for a new pair of jeans and you look at that um, price tag, you'll notice that you've got dollars and cents. So sometimes you'll see something that'll be for $19.99 or you'll see something that'll be $29.95 and you'll notice that there's a decimal there. So the 95 in $29.95 is 95 cents and so the nine is in the dimes place. You'll see 95 cents written. The nine is in the dimes place and the five is in the pennies place. So we have 29.95, here is the change or the part that is less than $1. So we've got nine dimes and five pennies. Well, the dimes are the same thing as tenths, all right? And the hundredths are same thing as pennies. So you can remember that as the dimes place and the pennies place. And then you'll remember, oh, dimes are worth 10, that's tenths hundredths are worth pennies, and um, pennies are in the hundredths place, that's hundredths, okay? So, um, when we talk about that, we talk about um, how much would it be in order to equal one whole, okay? So we know that these are part of a whole, so what does it mean if we're trying to equal one whole? Well, we know that 10 dimes equal a dollar, well, it takes 10 of these tenths to equal one whole, okay? So that's another way that we can correlate that using money. We also have pennies. It would take 100 pennies to equal a dollar. It takes 100 hundredths to equal one, okay? So there's another correlation to, um, or comparison of decimals to money, all right? So I just wanted to, Kind of review that with you and also I want to take a look at this tenths chart. So this tenths chart or this tenths grid kind of looks like a Kit Kat bar. So when you look at this you can see that the whole thing that there are ten tenths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right now these look like snaps on a Kit Kat bar so if I snapped two of those snaps off and ate them, and I had some left over for later, I would have eaten two tenths. So I could write that on my grid, or on my place value chart, two tenths. So if I snap two of these off, if I color these in and say they were gone, I will have eaten two tenths of that Kit Kat bar. All right? So. That's part of the whole. I still have eight tenths left over for later. So two tenths are what I ate. So that's what I'm representing here on my place value chart. Now, let's take a look at the hundredths. All right, so if I have a hundredths grid, and I guess I could look at this as if it were a ginormous Hershey bar. So I have my hundredths grid. So on my tenths grid, I notice that I've only got one line here. I notice in my hundredths grid, I've got squares in, in each line. So how many squares are in each line? Let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's 10 in each one. So I've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So there, I notice that I can count those 100 squares. That's why it's called a hundredth grid. So. If I ate eight of these squares, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I, ate, I had eight of them, okay? 
I snapped them off and I ate them. So I would have no tenths, eight hundredths, okay? That is eight, that's read eight hundredths, all right? I don't read the tenths because I didn't eat any tenths. Now, if I look at this again, if I color in, and let me go ahead and let's see if I find my purple pen here. Oh, here it is, okay. So say I eat, I'm gonna be greedy this time. And I'm gonna eat 21. I've got 10, 21, 21 hundredths, all right? So then when I write that as a decimal, I can write that as 21 hundredths, okay? Because I have 21 of them colored in, and this represents 21 hundredths. Now, when I read 21 hundredths, okay, I remember writing fractions like that too. So when I rewrite this down here, I can write 21 hundredths, but I can also say 21 hundredths and make it look like that. Now remember before when I talked about eating only eight snaps of that, I said eight hundredths. Eight hundredths can be represented as eight hundredths, all right? So that gives you an idea of how to write them from a decimal to a fraction. All right, so let me go ahead and erase. I'm using my hand as an eraser. I have teacher finger. All right, now let's take a look at thousands. Now look what happens here. Holy cow, look how small those are. All right, those are little teeny tiny pieces. I hope I don't get a candy bar like that. All right, so this would be the whole thing. And in this thousands grid, there are a thousand pieces, okay? So each one is one thousandth of the whole. So that would be a whole lot of pieces on a candy bar, right? So let's take a look. I'm gonna put this back up here for just a second. Let's take a look at the hundredths. And let me see if I can put these tenths up here too. Let's take a look at them. So if you look at the tenths compared to the hundredths compared to the thousandths, oops, you'll notice that as it moves down, the pieces get smaller and smaller. Well, if you look up here when we're talking money, well, dimes are worth more than pennies, right? So it kind of makes sense. Each one of these is worth less. Each one of these is, each piece gets smaller and smaller as we move down. Each amount up here is worth less as we move down. Okay, so that's just giving you a comparison of the, the decimals to the money. All right, so now let's look at some visual representations. I'm gonna scoot this over here. We're gonna look at some visual representations of um, different amounts, and we're gonna write them as a decimal and as a fraction. So while I'm doing this, it would be really great practice if you would get a piece of paper out and do this with me. Um, your paper is going to look very similar to this paper. And so it'll be really good practice for you. All right. Now, let's take a look at this first one. Okay. So I notice right here, when I'm looking at the different grids, I notice that this matches up to the hundredths grid. Okay. So we've got 10 in each row. So it's gonna make it easy when a whole row is colored in because I can just count by tens. I like easy. All right, so let's take a look at number one. So we've got one, two, three rows. So we've got 10, 20, 30, 31, 32. All right, so I've got 32 of those hundredths colored in. So um, if I, let me move these and I can go ahead and write that up here on my face value chart. So I've got 
32 hundredths, right? And you can refer to your place value chart in your binder while you're doing this activity. All right, so it says here to write it as a fraction and as a, and they left off the word decimal, and as a decimal. So we're gonna write it both ways, okay? So first of all, um, I know that you've written them in fraction form before. So 32 hundredths is the same thing as 32 out of 100, okay? So we're gonna write it 32 hundredths, and the decimal way to write it would be the decimal and then 32, and it's read the same way, 32 hundredths. So the fraction and the decimal, these two mean the same thing. These two are equivalent. I could actually rewrite this, 32 hundredths is e equal to 32 hundredths, just like that, okay? All right, so let's take a look at this next one. And I'm gonna erase this up here so I'm ready to write the next one. So here, I don't have a whole row um, colored in, so I'm gonna have to count to see. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. So I've got five hundredths. So when I write that, now you remember, in whole numbers, if we have something missing, we put a placeholder, which is a zero. So here I've got five hundredths. So what's missing? The tenths, right. So I've gotta put a zero for tenths, okay? So, first of all, um, I need to write this as a fraction. Well, five hundredths would be written like that. So, now I'm gonna write it as a fraction, five hundredths, and then on the second line, I'm gonna write it as a decimal. So remember, I have no tenths, I have five hundredths. I can rewrite this down here and say five hundredths is equivalent to or equal to five hundredths. All right, we're on a roll now. So let's take a look at number three. Number three, oh, there's a lot of them colored in. So I'm gonna count 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. 81, 82, 83, 84. 84 hundredths, because I know that there are a hundred of them there, and 84 of them are colored in. 84 hundredths, there's the decimal way to write it. 84 hundredths, that is the fraction way to write it. So I can come down here, and first I'm gonna write the fraction, 84 hundredths and then I'm gonna write the decimal, 84 hundredths. I notice that kind of looks like 84 cents, doesn't it? Eight dimes, four pennies, mm-hmm. All right, so I can also rewrite this 84 hundredths is equal to 84 hundredths. All right, number four. Okay, so I've got 10, 20, 30, 40, and I know I have one whole line except one, so I know there's nine there. So there's 49 hundredths, so I can write it 49 hundredths, and it kind of looks like 49 cents, 49 hundredths. It can be written both ways. So I've got to write the fraction first, so I'm going to write 49 hundredths, and then I'm gonna write it, it looks like 49 cents, four dimes, nine pennies, 49 hundredths. So I can write this 49 hundredths is equivalent to 49 hundredths, all right? There we go, all right. Number five. Let's see here. All of them are colored in except three. Well, let's go back to our mental math strategies. I know there's 100 there. I know that three of them are not colored in. So I have 100 minus three, which would give me 97. 
So that would be 97 hundredths. So I don't have to do all that counting. All right. And then I can write 97 hundredths like that. Looks like 97 cents. And I also know that if I had three more hundredths, I would have one whole. Or here, if this was uh, 97 cents, I just need three pennies in order to equal one whole. One whole dollar. All right, so I'm gonna write the fraction way first, 97 hundredths. Then I'm gonna write the decimal way, 97 hundredths. And then I'm gonna go ahead and write 97 hundredths is equivalent to, or equal to, 97 hundredths written as a decimal. All right, I'm gonna do one more, and then I'm gonna give you a minute. I'm gonna have you pause the video, and I'm gonna have you do seven and eight, and then we'll check it together. All right, so number six. Number six didn't come out, so I had to color it myself. I had Simba's help. All right, so we've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 82, all right? 82 of these squares are colored in out of the whole thing. This is only part of the whole. So we've got 82 hundredths. That's written as a decimal. And here is 82 hundredths written as a fraction. All right, so we've got 82 hundredths written as a fraction and a decimal. And here they are written 82 hundredths is equivalent to 82 hundredths. All right, so I want you to take a look at seven and eight, pause the video, and then we'll go over it together. All right, so we've got number seven. You'll notice that there are five lines colored in. At least I hope you noticed. All right, so there are 50 hundredths. So we would write 50 hundredths. 50 hundredths is written like this in decimal form, and there it is in fraction form. So we've got 50 hundredths, 50 hundredths. All right, now you'll notice that is exactly half. Well, 50 out of 100, that is also half. So 50 out of 100, 50 hundredths, is also equivalent to half. Well, what about 50 cents? This looks like 50 cents. That's half of a dollar. All right, so we've already extended our learning. 50 hundredths is equivalent to or equal to 50 hundredths. All right, last but not least, let's see if you got this one right. Let's do, let's do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85. 85 hundredths. All right, hope you got that one right. 85 hundredths. It looks like 85 cents. 85 hundredths on, in fraction form is written like that. But they both look the same when we have that visual representation. So 85 hundredths. 85 hundredths. We're going to write a mathematical sentence. 85 hundredths is equivalent to 85 hundredths. All right, so I hope that this makes sense to you. I hope that you are understanding this. You have a paper 
that looks just like this one to complete on your own. And you need to write the, the visual representation in both fraction and decimal form. Remember, they mean exactly the same thing. The visual representation, the picture, shows both the fraction form and the decimal form. Okay, so um, if you have any questions about that, though, you can email me if this is um, if you're not understanding this or you need more explanation. All right, so the paper that you have to complete looks like this, and you're going to need to do both the fraction and the decimal form. So if it's easier for you to go ahead and make a place value chart and write the decimals in, let me just scooch this down, and write the decimal in, and then on that piece of paper, on a separate piece of paper, then write the fraction way, and then copy it into the, onto the paper, that's fine too. All right? Um, and don't forget, you also have copies of the tenth grid, um, the hundredth grid, and the thousandth grid, but we won't be using thousandths today. We're just going to be using the tenths and the hundredths today. But you can refer to those too. All right? Um, I will see you on Thursday. I want you to keep thinking, keep watching, always stay curious, and I'll see you tomorrow.